Growing up in a household of six kids, including three older sisters and one bathroom, I had to learn to wait at an early age. If that were not enough, my gentle, soft-spoken mother lived her whole life in slow motion. As the saying goes, it took her an hour and a half to watch 60 minutes. After church on Sunday, sometime between 12 and 1, my mom would come home and start preparing a sizable lunch at her usual paint-drying, grass-growing pace. By 2 o'clock or so, people start getting hungry. Sometimes I would complain, Mom, I'm dying in here. Her response was always the same, Eat a cracker. This was code language for, It will be ready when it's ready. In the meantime, do something positive to pacify yourself. Through those years of waiting on my mom, we kids learned how to wait without complaining. My dad, a rough Depression-era cotton farmer from rural Alabama, never did. He went out to the car early each Sunday morning as if in hopes that this Sunday would be different. I guess somehow he thought that drawing harder on his cigarette, shaking his head, mumbling under his breath, and occasionally blowing the car horn would make her move faster. But eventually she would come running as best a middle-aged woman in high heels could run, then suddenly stop, put her finger to her mouth, and disappear back into the house to get something she had forgotten. We kids were not focused as much on how late my mom was, but more on how my dad would react. His lack of patience had a greater impact on me by far than her persistent tardiness. Even as a young child, I remember thinking that his reaction was not helpful. Now, most people do reasonably well with everyday tests of their patience. Those who have too little get all the attention. And I've learned that it's good to take measured and calculated steps to overcome the obstacles that frustrate us. But if you find yourself frequently losing your temper because someone else is slowing you down, it could be that the problem is not the someone else. In scripture, we often find patience listed among the other character traits that affect the way we interact with other people. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. I urge you, Paul says, to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And again in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, and so on. Think about Jesus, God in the flesh the power of the universe in his words, life and death subject to his very will. And yet Jesus had the patience to deal with the pious, insincere, stubborn people who were slow on the uptake. And how did he deal with them? He taught them, gently corrected them, worked with them, and showed them. Sometimes he even thoughtfully rebuked them. Our lack of patience will be clear to those around us. It will affect all our relationships, it will drive people away from us and make them uncomfortable in our presence. Greater patience will give people the sense that they are safe around us and that we are not going to go off on them. So next time you're dealing with other people and feel the anger rising because they're not meeting your expectations, remember a bit of wisdom from my mom and eat a cracker. <laughs>